This teen reeled in a monstrous catch that locals had been desperate to snare for over 40 years. Following a long day's fishing on a river in Lillooet, Canada, Nick McCabe is somewhat disappointed with his haul. But suddenly, the teenager catches sight of something leaping into the air from the water. Could it really be? With friends by his side, he tells them to hang on as their boat goes darting after the creature. During August 2016, McCabe was working as a guide on the Fraser River for a fishing company that provides tours. And located in the Canadian province of British Columbia, this stretch has a reputation for housing some incredibly large fish. So with that in mind, the young fisherman remained eagle-eyed as he took clients out on the water. Now, McCabe was joined by a group of buddies on one particular day, aiming to write his name into local folklore. But, as we previously mentioned, the trip appeared to backfire on the group, since they struggled to find anything of note. However, their luck changed in a big way later on. After a potential catch was sighted, McCabe and his group set off after it. Once he hooked it, the guide engaged in an epic tussle with the creature, desperate to bring it in. By the end of the fight, he reeled in the giant fish and made a bit of history in the process. Every year, people take part in a number of different outdoor activities, enjoying themselves with their friends and family. Whether it's a hiking trip or simply playing a sport, these pastimes still have the power to bring people together. On that note, fishing can certainly be included in that category. Compared to other activities and sports, fishing appears to be quite relaxing on the surface. Indeed, there are many occasions when fishermen can just take in their surroundings while waiting for a bite in the water. However, as we're about to discover, that's not always the case in certain parts of the world. For instance, the Fraser River has been a hotbed of activity in recent years with visitors encountering some truly record-breaking fish. And a British couple could definitely attest to that as Margaret and Michael Snell snagged a huge catch in July 2012. In fact, it proved to be a very significant find. Incredibly, the Snells managed to reel in a sturgeon that measured over 12 feet in size. As a result of the discovery, a new world record was reached. After that, more sturgeons were found in the river, with one of those hitting the headlines in the summer of 2014. And as we'll soon find out, this fish was particularly heavy. To celebrate Father's Day that year, a man named Paul Jarvis had a treat for his dad. Yes, the pair who hailed from Atlanta, Georgia, traveled up to British Columbia for a fishing adventure on the Fraser River. And while it suggested that Jarvis was aware of previous stories, not even he could have predicted what happened next. You see, while Jarvis was out on the river with his father Ron, he felt a bite on his fishing rod. And before long, he realized that this wasn't a standard catch. Speaking to UK newspaper The Daily Mail in June 2014, he said, In the first few minutes I had it on the line, I couldn't believe the weight and power of the fish. As Jarvis continued to explain, I'm a big guy but could barely hold on to the rod, let alone begin to reel the fish in. As I battled the fish, my dad handed me water to keep hydrated and held on to my fishing belt and harness. When I saw the head come out of the water, it was massive. In the end, it took Jarvis and his guides over an hour to reel it in, leading to a stunning visual. With the sturgeon in their possession, the father and son posed for an eye-catching photograph in the river. As for the measurements, it was slightly smaller than the world record holder. For you see, this sturgeon was 11 feet in size, but weighed around 900 pounds, leaving Jarvis stunned. I knew the trip was going to be great, he told the Daily Mail, but I never thought we'd hook a 900-pound sturgeon. Once the figures were recorded, the fish was then given a tag ahead of returning to the water. For as you might guess, these fish are protected, with the Fraser River Sturgeon Conservation Society keeping track of their movements. And since 1997, the organization has been working hard to ensure the survival of the creatures. 
So, with that in mind, one of the Society's members revealed a bit more about what they do. In almost 20 years, we've collected over 130,000 samples, Sarah Schreier told CBC News in August 2016. We've deployed over 64,000 tags, and with a large sample size for a research study like this, it allows us to have a very high confidence level in our reporting on the population estimates, the abundance estimates for the area that we sample. Given the effort it would take to catch and tag a large sturgeon, the organization receives help from local fishing companies, and one of them is River Monster Adventures. First started back in 2011 by now owner Jeff Grimmelson. Since then, countless tours have been offered to visitors who want to snag their own monster. Meanwhile, the company's website provided some background on Grimmelson, who was no stranger to fishing. Coming from a commercial fisherman family, read a post on the site's about page, our expert pro guide Jeff Grimmelson first stepped on a fishing vessel at the very young age of two and has been on the water ever since. And the post continued, operated by his grandfather Ollie from a homestead in Hecla Island in Lake Winnipeg, Jeff grew to become very involved in the family business's rich commercial and sport fishing history. And he was a regular fixture on vessels all of his life, making his living from the water just like his father before him. However, everything changed in 2005 when Grimolfson caught a sturgeon for the first time in British Columbia. After that, he frequented the Fraser River for over a decade, keeping an eye out for the huge fish. And as time went on, the River Monster Adventures owner found a like-minded partner. Yes, the website revealed Jeff's partner in crime is Jen Sharensky, who only after one trip out was hooked herself by the incredible size and wild struggle required to landing these prehistoric monsters. She's caught several herself now over the years. At that stage, something was made very clear to the readers. Indeed, the site reiterated the views of the Sturgeon Conservation Society, touching upon what happens when the fish are nabbed. As the post explained, Jen and Jeff practice safe handling with every sturgeon caught, and every fish is released carefully in a very practical and proactively healthy manner. Each white sturgeon is then logged in our records and with the province of British Columbia. Now, around five years after River Monster Adventures opened for business, a teenager named Nick McCabe joined the company, and in the summer of 2016, he embarked on his debut season as a guide, leading visitors up the Fraser River. But no one could have predicted what eventually had transpired over that season. As we mentioned earlier, McCabe and a group of friends hopped aboard a boat in August 2016, and the former was hoping to come across a big catch in the river. Yet, as the day went on, his plans appeared to go awry, with no signs of a good catch forthcoming. The group approached one final spot to round the trip off. Looking back at that moment, McCabe spoke to CBC News in August 2016. He recalled, We had fished all day pretty hard and struggled to get something to a good size for my group of friends that I had out. Then, the last hole of the day there, we pulled into the area and it happened right away. Indeed, McCabe finally found what he was looking for as he sighted a huge creature. As the guide continued to explain, the fish jumped right out of the river and I said, well, that looks like a 10-footer, so strap on. We're going to be into at least a two-hour fight. And it ended up being two hours and 15 minutes. After McCabe got a hold of the fish with his rod, a tensile tussle ensued, with his friends joining the fight too. But the situation was made harder by the teenager's preferred approach, as he liked to use a short line. Due to that, the group had to stay close to their potential catch throughout. As the guide explained to CBC, at one point, the fish had swam upriver against the current, and I was moving up the river with the boat following him. We just kind of do what he does, because a fish that large, he can snap the line no problem. Despite the struggles, though, the group eventually reeled in their foe, but little did they realize that this fish was, in fact, more unique than most. 
Yes, because as it turned out, McCabe and company had caught a notorious sturgeon known as pig nose. For you see, the name comes from the fish's very distinct appearance, sporting a pink snout. And prior to his capture, he'd built up a reputation over the last 40 years as local fishermen couldn't nab him. But in an interesting twist, someone had managed to tag pig nose in the past. So although this wasn't the first time he'd been caught, McCabe is believed to be the first fisherman to do it. Amazingly, the giant sturgeon is thought to be more than 80 years old, measuring at just over 10 feet in size. Regarding pig nose's weight, it's estimated he comes in at around 650 pounds. After McCabe caught him, Grimolfson shared some more of the information about the huge sturgeon, touching on his history. His name is Pig Nose, and you can see why. He damaged his nose 40 years ago, the fisherman told Global News. As Grimolfson continued to explain, so when his nose healed, it looked like a pig nose. As the legend lives on, you'd be in a sporting goods shop and you'd hear, my buddy was sure that he had pig nose on the line. This fish has been the talk of fishing and sporting goods shops for years. Meanwhile, once McCabe nabbed the local legend, he explained what he did next. I was given a tagging kit with microchips, the guide told CBC News, so every fish I catch, I scan completely. And if it's a recapture, I take the length and girth of the fish and record that. And if he's not tagged, I insert a microchip into him. In the case of pig nose, the data from the previous tag show that he was still growing. Also, McCabe revealed that the sturgeon was in perfectly good health before snapping some pictures with him in the water. And those images were subsequently shared on the River Monster Adventures Facebook page. What's more, the photos went on to garner plenty of attention as people flocked to see proof of the catch. You see, the post itself earned over a thousand likes and more than 670 shares on Facebook. In addition to that, it generated in excess of 300 comments as well. As for McCabe, Grimolfson was full of praise for the young guide following the incident, for you see, Pig Nose wasn't the only notable catch that he'd made over the course of that summer. Alongside that, the business owner was very impressed with his determination and endeavor while out on the water. Indeed, Grimolfson told Global News, McCabe's been doing really well all summer. He caught another really big fish a couple weeks ago. He saw it jump out of the water and said, I'm going to catch that fish. He fished in the same spot for four days and caught him. He's the sturgeon whisperer. However, this story had one more fishy twist in 2017. Yes, around 12 months after McCabe wrote his name into local folklore, he went out on the Fraser River again, and the guide saw something quite familiar in the water, which prompted him to act. And we'll soon find out it appeared a reunion was in the cards. You guessed it, McCabe had spotted Pig Nose once more before pursuing him for the second time. And by the end of the rematch, the now 21-year-old guide came out on top again. Following another photo, the River Monster Adventures employee let him go. Touchingly, it seemed as if McCabe had grown attached to this long-bodied friend. Yes, because off the back of that second encounter, McCabe spoke with CBC News again in October 2017, explaining what transpired. But compared to the first attempt, he managed to catch pig nose in around an hour. The fisherman said he might not be the largest fish in the river, but it's a very special fish for us. As McCabe put it, I had a gut feeling it was pig nose, just the time of year and how the fish was acting. But as we got it up to the shore, I was like, this guy looks pretty familiar. He's been through both world wars. He's really old, but he's still putting weight on, so that's cool to see.